Hello, Brain Shakers. Uh, welcome to today's episode. Your host here, Brave Alistair, is. I hope you are as excited as I am today because we're going to be looking at a mal position. Now, a mal position is uh, just a change in terms of the position. In most cases, you would want, when you have a cephalic presentation, to have an anterior position, but then the fetus chooses to take up different positions, such as the occipital posterior position. Now, from uh, the background information uh, that we have from the sessions that we have already looked at, and if you haven't looked at those sessions, you can find them on my YouTube channel, which is the Brain Shakers Academy. We know and understand that when we're looking at the pelvis and looking at it from this aspect, we know that this aspect here is the posterior aspect, and then this is the anterior aspect. So when the fetus then chooses to take up positions where it has the occipital bone pointing towards the posterior end here and appears like that or when you are feeling the anterior fontanel in the anterior aspect of the pelvis then it means that you are dealing with an occipital posterior position now how do we then diagnose these occipital posterior positions so we're going to use the physical examination principles we know that we have about four principles for physical examination well obviously we're going to be talking about inspection we're talking about palpation there is percussion and then auscultation. But because this is not a respiratory assessment, then we're not going to be percussing anything. So we'll use the other three principles. Now on inspection, what are you going to see? So when you're inspecting and looking at the abdomen of this woman that you're just about to examine, there are certain things that can suggest that you would be dealing with an occipital posterior position. When you look at the umbilicus, there's going to be a depression that appears more or less like a saucer shaped depression on the umbilicus. Sometimes it may be slightly lower than the umbilicus. And the main reason why that is happening is because the fetal spine is actually in a parallel arrangement to the maternal spine. So it is the fetal spine that is lying in parallel to the um, maternal spine. And what happens is that there's going to be that form of flexion of the fetus in that abdomen. Now, there's this end here, which is going to be on the higher end. And then you have also the limbs here on the higher end. Then you have a depression in between here that forms that saucer shaped depression when you're looking at that abdomen. Well, as when you have a normal uh, anterior position, this rotates to a position like that. And then that does not form that depression that you normally see when you're looking at um, uh, the uh, occipital posterior uh, presentation. And also when you're looking at the abdomen of the woman, you may also notice that there's going to be fetal movements on both sides of the midline. So midway of the abdomen, because the fetus is lying in parallel, the spine, the fetal spine is lying parallel to that of the mother. Then you find that fetal movements on the left, there are fetal movements also on the right. So that is what you're going to be able to see on um, uh, inspection. Now, what do you find out on palpation? So when you are doing your palpation, you may be able to palpate the fetal limbs on both sides of the midline. So you'll be able to get through when you're doing your low pods maneuver, you'll be able to palpate the fetal parts on both sides. That is the left and the right as well. And it will be very difficult for you to then come and assess where the fetal back is. Why? Because the fetal back is just a straight or lying parallel to the maternal spine, meaning that the fetal back is more or less hidden from your way of a palpation. And what you are able to feel now is just these fetal limbs. So that then means that even where you would then be auscultating, the position is also going to change. So the third principle, obviously, in physical examination is an auscultation. And if we're doing an auscultation, then we want to feel for that a fetal heart. We want to listen to that good fetal heart. Now, where are you going to find a fetal heart. So in a normal presentation, when you have that cephalic presentation, you would be feeding uh, that uh, fetal heart where you have the umbilicus, you'll be drawing a line to the superior anterior iliac spine. That is where you would be feeling for that uh, fetal heart rate. But when you have an occipital posterior position, you would either be feeling the fetal heart rate around the midline 
or you would have to go into the loins, that is the maternal loins, for you to be able to get that fetal heart rate, meaning that it shifts and deviates away from that normal line that you would be drawing from the maternal umbilicus to the superior um, anterior uh, iliac spine. That is where you would be finding that a fetal heart. Now, when the woman obviously gets into labor or when you are doing an assessment, you will also be able to denote that you are dealing with an occipital posterior position when you find the occipital fontanel in the posterior aspect. So if this is presenting on your vaginal assessment and then you tend to feel that the occipital or the uh, the occipital bone is in the posterior aspect or the posterior fontanel is felt in the posterior aspect and the anterior fontanel is felt in the anterior aspect, then it means that you are dealing with an occipital a posterior position. So it is very cardinal for you to then understand the different landmarks here. The fontanels and the suture lines, which is the sagittal suture here, will help you to determine where the fontanels are. So if you find one fontanel, let's say for instance you have found the the um the posterior fontanel here then you can move towards the anterior fontanel by following that sagittal suture all the way until you find the anterior fontanel now when that has been ascertained then you would know what a position looking at where you have felt the posterior fontanel so if you felt the posterior fontanel pointing towards maternal uh, left, then you would be determining that as your left uh, posterior or your left occipital posterior position. If it is pointing towards the right, then you would be determining that it is a right occipital posterior position. So once this has been uh, said and done, then you can also do an ultrasound scan that will help you to determine what position the fetal head is in. So that is basically how you would come up with a diagnosis of an occipital posterior position. It does culminate into a normal delivery depending on the how many rotations then it does make. I would say a number of the occipital posterior positions or presenting um, uh, fetuses would then make the long rotation three eighths of a seiko to then come and lie under the synthesis pubis and then culminate into a normal delivery. Now I look at that in the various outcomes of the occipital posterior positions in a different session. So make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of that amazing stuff that is coming your way. So if you found this particular video helpful and insightful in understanding the occipital posterior position and how to make that diagnosis, then please go ahead and drop me comments in the comments section and share the video as much as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.